Welcome to South Omaha Speed. Uh, today we're working on the Omaha Coupe or the back of the car. Uh, the plan is to take a Model A forward rear spring with the high arch to go over a future quick change. Um, installing that on the 40 Ford Banjo. And I've got one side hooked up and I made a spring leaf stretcher, you should call it. Um, so my dad brought some all thread and he made one for our black roadster. And so I wasn't part of that process, but uh, he kind of told me how to do it. I think I got it figured out. I've never done it before, but uh, I made one up and I'll show you what I got going on. Okay, so here's the 44 Banjo. The plan is to get it slid under the car today, so I'm gonna to try to get this, uh, this is the main leaf. Off, there's 10 leaves that make up the Model A spring. And this is the main arch with the eyelets on the end here. So I got the one end uh, on here with the shackles, uh, semi-tightened up. And then, so all I'll have to do when I get this thing stretched is to bring this up here and and tie it up but so the stretcher here call it a stretcher or whatever it is here but um piece of all thread that was kind of cut within about two inches of a fit in here and then i just ran some um, half inch all thread ran some nuts down on it with some washers and i cut these pieces of uh, conduit here about eight inches a piece and i smashed over the end so it'll fit shouldn't kick out so uh, slide these over each end and then uh, get it positioned up in there and then I'll start walking those nuts out and we'll, uh, hopefully uh, spread that spring out enough the right length that I can put that shack on the other side so I'll get the camera set up and uh, we'll see if it's gonna work So I'm bolting up those shackles and I'm missing one of those factory crown nuts. They're actually, I think they're kind of like a locking nut as well. And all I had was a galvanized uh, 3 8 fine thread, I guess is what it is. And uh, I just wanted to show you something I got from Hondo Stash that K, I bought from K uh, with, with the jacket and all the other parts I got for the car too. Um, but it's this box of old Ford stuff, castle nuts, among many boxes I got, but look at all these old castle nuts in here. And I just pulled this one out right here for that shackle. But uh, just blessed to have that little stuff like that. Um, Hondo had all those years, right? And um, I put it to use on an uh, old car he was affiliated with, so pretty pumped about that. So I'll get these shackles tightened up, and as I, in the process of tightening up, the actual spring uh, spreader actually fell out. So. Awesome, it worked great. Um, old man had me in the right direction on that, so thanks, Pops, if you're watching. I'm surprised he's not here yet because he usually comes over. I took the day on vacation, so I'm sure he'll be here 
at some point today. But um, anyway, so get these tightened up, these shackles tightened up, and then I got, uh, I'll start putting the rest of the spring pack on and we'll uh, try to get this set up in the car, so. So I have those tights, the actual uh, shackles. And I just wanted to note too that this is actually one of uh, Hondo's wrenches that I bought from K. So just totally cool to use an old Jax member, one of the original Jaxman 55 tools and nuts and parts on this car. So Kay, if you're watching, thanks again. Linda, um, appreciate you guys for letting Eric and I come over there and uh, buy some of the stuff and really appreciate that. So it's getting put to good use and uh, couldn't be more honored to uh, use the parts and the tools to put this thing together. So moving on, we're going to try to get this uh, spring pack on here next and uh, start getting pieces in here. I'll use a piece of all thread, I think, in here to bring all that together is the plan. I don't have a uh, factory bolt that was in here. It was not factory. It was actually a piece of all thread where somebody had this part before together. The spring actually was donated by Eric Hansen here in town. Good dude, young car builder, uh, metal fabricator extraordinaire. And uh, this spring actually came from a guy named Dave. Uh, I can't remember his last name at the moment. He died here about a year and a half ago or so and had a bunch of stuff out there on 180th and State-ish street here in Omaha. And, um, some of the local guys had a chance to go out there and buy some of that stuff and keep it local. And, Springs actually from Dave's collection, and we're going to put that to use here too. On the so, totally pumped about that. So, keeping those local parts here on the car is important to me. So, um, anyway, let me uh, get those other pieces in here, and I'll uh, get some all thread. I think that's like a 3 8 all thread here. It's going to take to, to bring all this together that spring pack. And I'm, the factory spring was 10 leaves. It is with how many leaves the spring had in. I've kind of been red reading that uh, the Model A leaves were 10. Some were like the Roaches might have had seven leaves in them, and, but a normal spring pack for Model A, which was Model A was 28 to 31, was the years those were built. And they all had that high arch on the rear, and the reason why we're doing that high arch is to clear the, the quick change portion of the rear end where it will come off this rear end eventually. Um, it'll be right here with the sport gears in it. Um, I got one on the floor, but it won't happen now. But, when it comes time to build that quick change, I want to be ready. That's why we're putting this high arch in. I probably said that before, but uh, anyway, for anybody just joining, that's why we're changing to the high arch spring versus the relatively flat spring that would have came on the 33, 34, and uh, same spring that would have been used in this 44 would have been very flat. So that's why we changed the cross number here. This high hump for this high hump arch spring to clear this area here for a quick change down the road. So. Let me get those other spring pieces in here and uh, we'll get the camera turned back on and start pulling those down and pulling it together. Well, we got a little treat for you, buddy. Check we've made it over. We doing it now. We doing it now. So what I did is um, got a piece of all thread cut here to suck this spring down with and I threaded a nut on the end there and I put a square head on it and then I welded on the top. You can see that. And then it fits this square hole here. So I'll cut this for length once I get this, um, once I get the spring all sucked together and sucked up. That's my next move here. I think I'm going to go with eight leaves. The stock Model A Roadster had seven, from what I understand. And so I'm going to go ahead and put eight on this one. So it's, I kind of want it to be a little stiff. I don't know. We'll see. I always take leaf out if it's too much. So. Uh, so that's what we're doing here, and uh, let me get the camera repositioned, and we'll get this thing sucked together. We're st stacking these bad boys on here, and I'm going to come down here and put a little of this grease here, where you can see where that spring's really digging in. I'm not going to do the center up in here because it's already got some kind of sticky something on there that's been on all these years, and it's, it seems to be working well at this point. Evidently, I was really excited about the way the spring looked when I took it apart because I've seen them really rusty and nasty. So it's pretty, pretty clean. So Eric Hansen, if you're watching, thanks again. Dave, if you're up in heaven and you're watching, let's go to good use, buddy. I think it's Dave Vollmer was his name where the spring came from his collection. Omaha parts. Right, Dad? Yep. He 
can kind of see right in this, where, on this, where the spring has been wearing. All these tails out here where it really works itself, going up and down, that's kind of more putting the grease. I have no idea if you're supposed to do that or not. I'm just an office guy on the loose out here in the shop, you know what I mean? You're allowed, it's your own shop. It just seems like a good thing to do, I don't know. Out there on YouTube land, like, oh, I'll do that. I have no idea. Just keep moving forward, right, Dad? Yep. That's all we can do, buddy. Got neat stories for the old people song. That's right. Back in old 21, did that spring. Uh, good. The biggest question is, where do you take me to lunch today? I I don't know how you beat Runza. I don't know. Woo, we got Dairy Queen on the way. True, true, true. She went there last night with Andy. Anybody got walleye in town? In brownies. Can't see the hot rod brownies. They're all looped up. So you're going to be kicking up the height of your grass remember that you don't need the spacers or? Uh, underneath. Yeah. For the, you know, you bolts. Yeah, you know how we put spacers so the spring's thick enough if you take leaves out? On the black roadster, I just put uh, a little small leaves on the bottom. Oh, that's what goes on. stuffed them underneath. Yeah. Okay, your ice took the same one, come on top underneath. Under here, yeah. It gives your, your length and your U-bolts. For the thickness from up, yeah. Your U-bolts. Yeah. I didn't cut them or anything, I just left them. You mean? Yeah. There was five on, five on top of the roadster, five main leaves. And then I put the, I think, three to make up on the bottom. Was that a... Virgin Old Model A Spring, was it too? I have no idea. I can't remember. I can't remember. We got her. She's in there, eight leaves, probably too stiff, but we're gonna try it. Um, this is the piece of all thread with the hex nut here. It's tight. I got this clamp on here just for safety because it got some pressure on it. I could probably take this off now. I got these down here um, on the sixth leaf, I guess it would be. Three, four, five, six. Yep, on the sixth here and here. Tighten down. We'll just leave them on there till we get rolled up and we get the big. Um, shackle bolts, shackle bolts, but uh, bolts. few bolts. Thank you. Clamping it down here and here inside the cross member. So that'll be next to get this positioned. Um, Got to get that cross member. These are I redid these plates. I think in another video I talked about that. You can see I did a splice up here. These these were in the wrong spot. I don't know how I screwed that up. But give me some, give me some we we put some new plates in. These adjustable our brackets are off the old plates. I got new ones here. Here's one here. We gotta get them put in place and they line up with our uh, our holes here. So, gotta change that out. And what I'm probably gonna do next is get the rear end up. It's probably way too close to my face, sorry about that. 
But uh, get that rear end slid up in the transmission, get that pivot cup, all that bolted in, get all that greased, get the grease hook in, there's a grease hook, you can grease that with a grease gun. So get that all up in there next so we know exactly the wheels will be located in the wheel wells, then we'll go ahead and put the cross member on the spring and kind of estimate what holes we think you need to be in for right height. I think that's our next move. Maybe have the old man buy me lunch, then we'll grease that pivot and then uh, put this cross member back in the top of the spring and put our brackets on. So that's the plan. Okay, so I got the rear end. It's like day two or three of this project, this particular phase. We, I got the rear end in. Uh, it's, the cup is tight against the back of the transmission. I'll show you that. And I also got the new brackets that um, for that cross member. It pivots up and down on the frame. Uh, I got those in here. Uh, the cross member has been taken off the old plates. Now it's in here positioned on the new plates with the spring in, up inside there, exactly where it needs to be. So that's a good feeling to have that done. The car's pretty much at right height as it's mocked up right here. Got that side tacked in. The next plan of attack back here is, is weld these boxing plates in, get all that welded up. So I wanted to get this in where it needed to be. I'm probably going to put a 45 in here, just a, a piece of angle line or something to keep things from pulling. Not that it should pull, but just in case. And I'll take you up front and show you what the, the front of the transmission looks like. I got the transmission mounts into. You got these all finished up. Got the speedo gear on it. Got the speedo gear inside. The bearing's been uh, greased up in here. I cut a gasket for this cup. I used some quarter inch tubing, rubber tubing for the gasket on the bell here. Uh, hopefully so it doesn't leak, but all these old Fords are supposed to leak, I think, by design, seems like it. Um, anyway, so this has all been finalized. Everything in here is welded, bolted up. I, I still gotta add a couple bolts. But for the most part, everything you see here is tight. There's a couple in here. I, I'm kind of saving my nuts for some other stuff. Um, get some more hardware this week. But anyway, so everything in here is finalized. And then get that welded up. Next time, on the next video, I'm going to do the inner, the inner structure for the floor here. There'll be some uh, structure I have cut. It's kind of temporary. Remember the gas tank and the, and the battery's going to fit for trog. I'm going to use a tank that's going to be temporary. The tank I want to use is actually an old nitro tank they used to transport their nitro track in the old jacks members when they were running a 392 dragster i believe so more to come on that that'll be the final gas tank i think is what i'm going to run but for trog i don't have time to make the brackets for the old nitro tank so i have another tank i sort of got brackets on it that i got some structure that'll bolt by two should make it pretty easy um, anyway so thanks for watching we'll catch you next time on south omaha speed thank you